and it will actually depend upon whether or not we get the uh, whether or not the church can make the change is um, what we'll do. <laughs> I heard that the camps are in town. Are they? Yes. Good. Good, good. But they'll be leaving tomorrow. Oh. Well, she has to go back. She has to go back. every Tuesday. Uh -huh. Now he gave her a break from the home care. Uh -huh. So they left after her appointment last Tuesday. But she has to be back last Tuesday. Okay. 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 <laughs> so. Has anybody not signed up for the Halloweeny? They can. Okay. Go ahead and sign up. If you want to put your $5 in here, go ahead and put your $5 in there. <laughs> and then this is uh, for the Mystery Dinner Theater. And like I said, we think that we're going to change the date to the 17th. But if you, uh, you can pay me um, the, the 4th of November. Is, but if you can come, go ahead and put your name down. Go ahead. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay. Um, Christy, how did the, your GO team go that, do this week? Um, we went out to three houses and we really didn't get to talk to anybody, but hopefully, hopefully this week we'll be able to find somebody. Uh -huh. Good morning. Look who's here. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> 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 Hi, Hi, Welcome, Jim. person home that we uh, well it wasn't the person that we visited <laughs> it was someone that lived in the house and so we we're able to present the gospel but after questioning he had made a profession of faith uh, this but he really liked the invitation to the church <clears throat> uh, so anyway we didn't find the next one home and wound up going to see Brenda Solomon uh, just to pray uh, you know for her and she so appreciated the visit. And we just prayed on the doorstep with her. And she was going to go into treatment the next day for the cancer. And so that was very appreciative. So, so all of these, you know, visits, uh, sometimes they are ministry visits, sometimes they are evangelistic visits. And, uh, and so we were just uh, honored to be able to pray with with Brenda and it meant a great deal to her to do that. So that's great. Look at the Leos on the board. And then notice we added one December the 12th will be when we will go to serve at Calvary. We'll prepare the meal uh, for Calvary, uh, for the homeless at Calvary. And then we will um, serve it and, and have a sort of have a little party with them too because it's Christmas and that's when we ask everybody to uh, bring a Christmas card that five dollars in it and it's it's really uh, really appreciated and that's when we have the Calvary at the homeless shelter up in Forest Park but we'll we'll talk about it more and we'll sign up for it and that kind of thing um has anybody watched us on uh the streaming since, okay, I don't know. I know Brenda said she had not been able to find it, but then she saw the new. She was she was still trying to find it through the church, so she she's going to start watching that. And so much is going on at our church, folks. They just one thing after another. I know that tomorrow is tomorrow is no Tuesday is the well. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay, the women's ministry. Uh, uh, ministry. Then the 4th of November is the women's luncheon, uh, and so uh, you can sign up for that. Uh, 
be sure to read that little half sheet, <laughs> always. All right. Um, oh, and the 15th, the 15th of October. Come on in, Emily. <clears throat> the 15th of October is going to be a great day. That's next Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> next Sunday. We'll have a Sunday morning will be a multilingual uh, 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 church service where all of our language congregations will all come together. It's going to be a wonderful service. And then that night, the orchestra is going to play a concert. And it's not only, from what I understand, not only going to be uh, uh, hymns and church music, it's also going to be some, some more popular music, too. Uh, uh, and so it ought to be a wonderful, wonderful time together. So please mark next Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday at, uh, night, for uh, just a true blessing, a true blessing. When we have these multilingual uh, worship services, I always think that that's just the way heaven's going to be, to just see people from all cultures and languages come together and uh, worship together. It's just, it's just a special, special time. So that's, uh, those are the announcements. Uh, I will tell you, for those that don't know, uh, Becky has totaled the rental car and, um, and has no transportation. And so we don't exactly know where to go from here. Uh, we're meeting uh, with Lanny this afternoon, Tommy and I are. And so if y'all will just pray for God's wisdom and direction uh, for us, for the church, uh, for our class, uh, for Becky, uh, things are not good. <clears throat> things are not good. And we, we just are not sure where to go from here. Airport well, it, she works for the airport contracts to Delta. Yes, but she has to get there, and so mm -hmm. that's going to be a hard thing. So, because uh, she's way up in Atlanta now. She's uh -huh. up around a little five flights already. So, uh, continue to pray for her. Bless was her heart. Hurt? Uh, was, was she hurt in this accident? No, no, she wasn't, and wound up having had been driving on a donut. Uh, she'd That's had a flat tire. Make sure she understands the tire. A donut tire, you know, that yeah. they told her not to drive on. She oh, did, no. had a blowout on 285. Oh, ooh. And I know. I wonder if she would be killed. I know. And Michael and Vermeil went up and to change the tire. Anyway, it's a big thing. The car had to be towed away because the axle had been bent. And uh, so, so anyway, it's a. Uh, it's just heartbreaking. You say it, the rental car had a donut on it? Well, because she had already had a flat tire. Okay. And they put a donut oh, on her. Jesus, hey, they keep her car with a donut. I know. <laughs> they had told her to take it to get a tire, but she didn't have the money and didn't want to call the rental place because she was afraid they would take it. And so anyway, it's just, it's just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. <laughs> okay, um, so just just be in prayer. Y'all have been so supportive, uh, both with your prayers and with your gifts uh, to her. And, uh, and so I just appreciate that so much. Could we go to the Lord in prayer? And Tommy, would you open us in prayer this morning? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all those who are here today, and we pray your guidance and blessings on those who are in other places. Thank you for in his teaching. Thank you for the faithfulness of those who are in our class. We just pray that you'll watch over us and guide us and direct us as we go through the lesson today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, remember, and we're so glad to have the camps back <laughs> as far as Anne and the Lingles too. Remember, uh, here is the church, here is the steeple, open the door and hear all the people. We have been talking about the people that are in, in the church gathering uh, and that we are alive to gather in the church, in the church, 
we are we believe this is where we repent and uh and believe as we trust jesus as our lord and savior in the church is we are we are gathered to belong to the church we belong to the church through uh through the uh of baptism and and uh and then part of our membership in the church uh worldwide of course is um is the lord's supper as we celebrate our membership and with the lord in the lord's supper we are alive in the church to pray we are alive in the church to uh, abide to remain to to remain in Jesus and to remain but today we're going to talk about uh, uh, talk about uh, and and change our attention from being in the church to the church being sent the church now we we from going being in the church now the church is to be sent is to be sent the pastor said it best last week when he said the mark of a great church is not how many are gathered but how many are sent out how many are sent out and uh and so you saw the flags last week all around the church uh, wednesday night we even had people going to the different sites different flags of the different countries that they had uh, been to on mission trips to pray for that country and for the ministry in that country uh, our church just does one of the things that I love so dearly about our church is is missions is the church sin it's so many people involved in missions of going on missions as we grow in Christ as we grow in Christ we learn that part of that growth part of that growth is to extend the kingdom of God so why is the gospel of Jesus why is the gospel good news we know that the word gospel means good news uh, from the Greek but why is it good news but what we need to hear it absolutely and and we need to want it but what is good news about it it's better than our, the reality of our fallen world the reality of our fallen world absolutely good news <coughs> the creator god of the universe talk aloud the creator god of the universe wants to have a personal relationship between you that's the good news. That's the good news. I mean, we talk around it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's the frustrating thing for me when I hear about Christians who talk. Yeah. You want to, you know, I don't understand why people want to be forgiven for their sin. People don't care about being forgiven for their sin. What they don't know is that they could have a relationship with the Creator God that brings peace and joy that you can't get from anywhere else. Exactly. It's not about sin. It's never been about sin. Sin is what gets between us. It's about him. Well, it is about sin in the sense that we can't have that relationship without a forgiveness of sin. Because God cannot let sin into heaven. We will never have an eternal uh, relationship with the Father if we're not forgiven of that sin absolutely sin gets in the way but it's about god and the relationship that's exactly but the big umbrella is god having a relationship with almighty god who are we to have a relationship with almighty god there's not a single one of you as precious as you are that is worthy of a relationship with almighty god only through the good news, what? The news. That, that's also significant. News is typically something you've never heard before. Um, it's not the way it is on TV anymore, but... Um, <laughs> well, news is the information, really. Right. That, that, and it, it implies that it's being given or told to people who have not heard it. Have not heard it. It is, it is information 
that is so good. That is exciting. It is exciting. Has any one of you had the experiencing experience of sharing the good news with somebody? Good news. Good news. Me doing the experience. It's available to you. It's available to you. Once you hear this good news of this relationship with Almighty God and how you can get it, it's overwhelming, isn't it? It is. It is overwhelming to me, too. Oh, it is. Okay. So, so, uh, so who has had the experience of sharing your uh, the good news with somebody? Laura, you have? Tell, tell us about it. I share with my patients, or I, yeah, I've been sharing like with our family members and things like yeah. that. So I can remember one time you told me <laughs> that at that point that your ministry of who you needed to share the good news to, with was your family. Mm-hmm. You you said that is my ministry, and that was it. And because Laura takes in not only her family, but <laughs> She takes in baby squirrels and baby bunnies and, and, and baby children from all sorts of places. She, she takes in everybody. And, uh, and your ministry was sharing that good news with your family. Anybody else have the opportunity? Christy? On Tuesday, me and Uriah went out to pass out flyers for our business, and I went to this lady's house. I had our fall festival cards and our lottery scratch off. Uh-huh. And Uriah's like, Do you want to preach to them? I was like, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> so I was talking to the girl about our business, and then she was looking at me funny, and I was like, Do you know Bonnie? And she said, No. I said, Well, maybe you should. Come to our church and get a better understanding of who he is. And she said, I'm not interested. And I was like, Well, take this lottery ticket and scratch it off and see what God has to say to you. Mm-hmm. And so she scratched it and it said, Walk by faith, not by sight. Uh-huh. And she was like, I'm going to be there Sunday. I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. She was like 15 years old. So oh, oh, awesome. I was like, Oh, don't embarrass me. We can go. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, Well, yeah, it's great to learn some power. That's right. I was trying to promote my business, and I was like, I'm going to promote God while I'm doing it. That's exactly right. right. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? What, Randy? I had a boss that uh, she retired a few years ago. But I, she kept telling me I was her only friend at work. There was good reason for that. But um, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> she grew up Catholic. Uh-huh. Really and she and I spent a lot of hours in the car driving to Valdosta and all that. Oh and we would talk religion. At one point, I finally told her, I said, you know, you're a New Age Catholic Buddhist Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> she kept talking about all this stuff that had little bits and pieces of uh-huh. this thing. But I spent there, I guess I worked with her for 10 years, and I kept explaining biblical truth. She, she respected me for it, uh-huh. but she never did quite. And, and you know, our job is not to win the people. That's that's the Holy Spirit's job. But our job is to tell, isn't it? And everybody that we tell is not is not going to accept the Lord. But but the first time I had the experience of sharing uh, the good news with somebody, I was teaching in the college age. Um, department and and you know when they when when this young man accepted the Lord I was overwhelmed I was overwhelmed I just couldn't number one believe that he heard the Lord through any words that I said number two that I should be worthy enough to share with anybody it was it, it was an overwhelming experience for me and, and so wonderful, so wonderful. It's sort of like eating popcorn. You, once you taste it, once you have shared the good news and somebody has accepted it, it's like, ooh, I need another bite. 
I need another bite. I need another bite. Y'all, you can't understand if you've never shared your faith, you can't understand how good it tastes. How good it tastes. And so, and so today we're talking about alive to share. Now, I just want to go about this a little different. You have heard so many Sunday school lessons and sermons about sharing your faith and that kind of thing. But so I just want to go about it just a little bit different. Turn in your Bibles to Mark 1. I have a handout. It has two feet on it. And it has three boxes, and I'll tell you as we put in the box. I was sitting here disappointed. We didn't have a piece of paper. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I I wanted to mention too many things. I, it must be by design, but I truly have appreciated that the lessons that we did like to have the same subject matter that is being preached in the pulpit. Yes. It makes a huge difference to me to be able to have that continuity. And they are, they are not the same scripture, they're not the same exact, but it's still the message that, that works together. So that I can say, last Sunday the pastor said, and, and, uh, or when we're in the worship, ser- I mean, worship service, I can think, oh, that, that goes right along with what we did in, in Sunday school, in church, in, in life group. Okay, Mark. Okay, Mark 1, 16 through 18. And let's look. Got it? All right, now, you have to know that in uh, earlier in this chapter, in Mark 1, you know, Mark does not start with the birth of Jesus as uh, Matthew and and uh, Luke do. Also, it doesn't start with the idea that, that God has come to earth like John does. Mark just jumps in, and we have said this before as we studied the, Mark, the book of Mark. Mark is on the run. Mark moves fast. Mark is a is a book that you can read and you're almost running as you are listening at listening to Jesus ministry and uh, and so we look there Mark starts off with with the uh, with John the Baptist and Jesus is uh, baptized Satan tempts him and then the message and ministry of Christ starts uh, right in 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 chapter one uh, and just aside, and I think I may have told you this before. Remember, Jesus was about 30 years old. Now, does that sound sort of late to start your ministry? I mean, Cameron last Sunday, how old is Cameron? Cameron may be 30, but he's been in the ministry and been at a church since he got out of college. But you had brought up a week or two ago that there's a certain identical time Yes, and that to be a rabbi, you did not start being a rabbi until age thirty, and and this is of all Jewish men who were going into a rabbinic, rabbinical uh, ministry started at age thirty because the uh, the Jews thought that they needed not only the knowledge of the Bible but they needed the wisdom of experience. And so Jesus now has, uh, has started his ministry. John the Baptist has been put in, uh, in prison. Jesus goes about Galilee proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God, which is that relationship, a way to have a relationship with Almighty God. Um, and he says, the first thing he said, which we looked at right up here, is repent and believe. And then as Jesus goes out in, chapter, in verse 16, it says, And Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee. When you read 
the Bible, or for that matter, anything, but reading the Bible, do you have a picture in your mind? I used to tell children as I taught them reading to pretend there's a TV. You've turned the TV on in your mind, and somebody is talking to you, and they want you to hear their experience so you can relate to it. So turn the TV on in your mind and think about as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee. All right. He saw some fishermen. He saw Simon. Now, who is Simon later on? Because of Peter. Peter. <laughs> he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net along into the lake. That's how they fished back then. They didn't fish with a pole. They went out in their boats. They cast nets. And, uh, and so he was casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Uh, in other translations, it says, I will send you to be fishers of men. You have heard that. At once... They left their nets and followed him. At once, they left their nets and followed him. So what is happening here? What? He's calling his, uh, his disciples. He's beginning to call his disciples. The first ones, uh, Simon and Andrew. Okay, and then you, if you go on down a little bit. You see James and John uh, mm -hmm. followed him too. But uh, he called them, he's calling his disciples. What does he say? Mm -hmm. Follow, me. Follow me, follow me. He says, follow me. Uh, who are these people? Who are these people to, uh, that he's saying this to? Ordinary people. Ordinary people. Ordinary people, ordinary people who have ordinary jobs, who have ordinary lives, who have ordinary people, uh, 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 families. These are plain old people, just like you and me. Just plain old people, just like us. They had their good points, they had their bad points. They, some were more educated than others. They weren't really a uh, holy. A, a very educated group, but they knew the scripture. They uh, they were ordinary people just like you and me. So, in other words, Jesus walked by. They were ordinary people. Jesus walked by, now think in your mind, and all changed. Everything changed about them. Everything changed about them. Jesus walked by and he said, follow me. And what did they do? They followed him. They followed him. Why in the world do you think they followed him? They had... Why would they follow somebody? Now we'll tell you this. More than likely they've heard of him because John the Baptist had uh, had baptized him. They were uh, followers of John. The, some of them were followers of John the Baptist. Certainly knew all about John the Baptist's ministry. So more than likely, Jesus. They had heard Jesus and talked to Jesus. And at that time, a prophet or a, a famous rabbi would have some people that were. His posse, as they say today. <laughs> so, so they more than likely had heard of him. Probably but, a real personable person. Yes, mm -hmm. he might. Like when they walk the walk and they, they, they do what they say, and they come through with people when they say they're going to do something. There must have been something about Jesus. It, maybe it's because of the way the show, the chosen, did it. But is this when he did the? fish in the nets and surprised them? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That's going to be later on. <laughs> All they did right here, they they were out fishing. They were out oh, okay. doing, and they dropped their nets where they were oh, okay. and followed him. 
maybe and from most of scholars, uh, again, uh, I don't know this for a fact, but they believe that uh, they have heard a lot through John the Baptist, and they're very familiar, but the, the significance here is their faith. So when Jesus mm -hmm. asked them, they already, in their heart, they already waiting for Messiah. They were waiting for Messiah, that's mm -hmm. right, they were. And and it was changed, what up? No, you, you, then, me, I'm a grand They have a Christ mentality? Crowd, crowd. A crowd mentality? Two, three, <coughs> you, three, Okay, but now this was not in a crowd though. But they learned the good news. They heard the good news. Probably, possibly they had heard the good news. Uh, somebody else had their hand up. Yeah. What, Bobby? I think the main reason they followed him because they were predestined to follow him. Ah. They, they were following their purpose, and some of them probably didn't even realize. And Jesus has said later on, he had said later on when he was praying, and we know that from in the book of John, that he said, Father, these that you have given me. And so that could be it. What? So just imagine standing on the street. And God, the creator of the universe, is standing across the street and looks at you and says, come follow me. <laughs> You don't get to say no. So, I mean, Christ looked at these fishermen who were in their boats and said, he commanded them. It was something. So, so while I believe in free will, I also believe there are times when God tells us to do things. And in this very unique case, physical person of God on earth commanded somebody to do something. They had no choice. I, I don't know whether I, I, I sort of agree with that, sort of. Well, I, I but I, comment, yeah. But, but the, the realization is that they didn't do anything other than what they But they, they had been, they had studied scripture, all Jewish boys studied that scripture so they and and this was a time in the fullness of time as the scripture says that they believed that a messiah was coming so they were looking they were looking and when there are examples in the bible of people who were given a choice like the rich young man right who was a, just give up and follow me right that's all you have to choose but there are other examples where christ said Come follow me. And, and they did. The but but I think that that those that follow have that Holy Spirit that is drawing them so hard. Was a time a back when we were coming up. <laughs> There's another example where God didn't give somebody a choice and he hard and fair of heart. Yeah. Yeah. But but what I'm I'm saying is that uh when we used to when the, when the invitation was given at the end of a sermon, and do you remember when you made the decision to walk down the aisle? And it was so strong that, that you couldn't sit in your seat. I remember Tim. Tim, Laura and I were sitting there, and, uh, and, and Laura already knew that she was going to go forward. And uh, but Tim had said he was he was not he was not ready, and then all of a sudden at the invitation hymn we had our heads bowed, and all of a sudden Tim jumps up and runs to the front and we were looking uh, around what has just happened. It's that I think you're absolutely right. I'm just saying this uh -huh. is a unique, very unique position it is. where the physical God said come and follow. Me. Yes, right. It, that's right. It is, it is, you can't compare it to what we live, have now. No. It never will happen. Well, now. except the Holy Spirit speaks to us now and draws us now. But this this was a unique experience. I, I, I totally agree with you there. Uh, Jesus walked by and everything changed. When Jesus came into your life, when Jesus came into your life and you accepted him 
as your Lord and Savior, did everything change in your life? Did you did did your your whole mind sort of go? Uh, what what does all this mean? What does all this mean? Uh, you know, uh, the good news, the gospel makes really makes missionaries of all believers. What? Hope felt at peace with everything. When she when she heard the pastor and the pastor uh, offered that invitation, you know, we were just sitting there, standing there, and Hope says, I need to go down. And I said, why? <laughs> she said, I just need to go. And so well, we went down. <laughs> I hear this a lot. You talk about when your life totally changed. I was saved when I was nine. Uh huh. And, yes. And I, it, I remember like it was this morning mm -hmm. during the revival. And my parents, I was one of those that was in church nine months before I was born. And, <laughs> and I remember when it became my salvation instead of living under my parents right. and all that but it's not like i've been smoking and going to the right. pool hall and that's like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the one of the hard things but as jesus said follow me he was talking to ordinary uh people leading ordinary lives yeah, but and they yet don't they understand then that, that what you're saved from isn't uh, you know adultery, smoking, drinking. You're right. saved from the original sin, and that's what compelled me. Yes, that was the first time I realized at nine years old that I'm part of that chain of original sin, and this is the only way for me to. That's exactly live. right. And, so I, mean, yeah. I still don't but also remember that. They didn't know truly what they had been saved from. That's right. Until Pentecost. That's right. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. I mean, they they felt Christ compelling them. So the love of Christ compelled them. They were compelled to do something. Yes. I don't think the dots connected inside of them of what they committed to. I agree. Really, until Pentecost. I, I agree. I totally agree. But they still... They shared the story. What did they What did they tell? You know, if they were if they were then, uh, if he if Jesus said to them, "I'm going to make you fishers of men, or uh, make you fish for men," they were going to have a story. So, what was it? What was the story that they were going to tell? As they fish for men, as you were fishing uh, when when you went out, as you were. Uh, when anybody goes to, to share the gospel with anybody, you are a fisher of, of men. Uh, what, what is the story that the disciples told, you think? Well, they obviously told it to Mark because he wasn't there. Mark? Right. He, well, yeah, Peter probably helped Mark write this. Mark was probably too young. Yeah, he was. Uh, he right. Was young so, but Peter was telling Peter was telling the story to Mark. But, but don't you think they told about the kingdom of heaven? They told exactly what you're talking about, Joe. They talked about Almighty God wants a relationship with you. Almighty God wants you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Almighty God wants you to uh, to be saved. And as the they. Their understanding grew. They told their story. Listen, I was sitting in a boat, and uh, Peter was saying, I was sitting in a boat, and along comes this man, and he says, uh, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And, and I got out of that boat. And I followed Jesus. And from that point on, my life changed. We had some hard times. We had some, uh, we had some wonderful times. I saw Jesus. I saw him heal. I saw him, him do miracles of all sorts. I saw him raise somebody from the dead. 
I saw all of this. And then I saw when he was crucified and he was buried. And I ran to the tomb and I saw that the tomb was empty. And I know that he appeared to me. Oh, did he have a story? Did they have a story to tell? And, and so they had a story. And their story, whether it was Peter or John or James or uh, any of them, they had a story. That story is called their testimony. This story. Now that's a you know a fancy church word testimony, but folks, it's their story of what they saw, what they saw God wanting to do, and how God did that through Jesus Christ. So their story was all about the kingdom of heaven brought down to earth through the man of Jesus, uh, the Son of God, who uh, walked, who talked who preached, who healed, who did miracles, who gave his life as a propitiation for your sin and for my sin and how he was raised again so that we will all be raised with him in heaven. But okay, let's look a little deeper. But Turn, pl Daniel, but, what? But first they had to just say, I trusted yes. and I got to experience this. I got to be part of it, but did you ask him a week later and he said, hey, I don't know what we're doing, but I'm following him, I'm trusting him, yeah. and I'm, I'm with him, but they got to, you know, they, the culmination of all the experiences is what they, what they write about, but at first it was like, you know what we're doing? I don't know. I'm just following him. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. And, but, but he, that, he has, he's something different here. And it's like with us, we got to trust and, at the very beginning. And put our faith, and then we're just along for the ride. And, and we're along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's the, the growth in Christ. That's the growth in Christ that we're talking about. Okay, you so know, how... You know, just as a comment, I, I think as David said, uh, they expected the Messiah is going to be here. It wasn't like... Yes, totally cool. right. And then they saw, and, and the other significance is when they saw the Messiah, they recognize it. And that's our story. You know, and that, the Lord is talking to us. We have to recognize That's right. And I think that was the Holy yeah. Spirit. And as we... Uh, the Holy Spirit wasn't on earth yet. It wasn't Pentecost. Holy Spirit was on earth. Holy Spirit was always there all the way through the whole... But it was not in everybody. I'm just saying, we, everybody. we use our perspective on trying on what happened to them when they were called. And we can't. Because the relationship with the Holy Spirit now is different than it was it, with them then. It was. That's why I that's kind of why I said when Christ in person said, Come follow me, they weren't being convicted by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. It right? In that internal relationship. It's a very thin, it's a very precise theological argument, but Jesus Christ on earth was a very unique thing. Absolutely. And when he spoke, things happened. Mm -hmm. Right? It wasn't that they had to trust the Holy Spirit to... Um, I didn't say they were trusting the Holy Spirit. I said the Holy Spirit just put something in there. To why? Th God this is different. Well, uh -huh. You don't need okay. both. Well. <laughs> you, you had this one guy, and he's human, and he's talking to all these other humans, and they're following him because he has this trust in his father. And they're watching him go place to place, putting all this trust, selfless, all the way to his death. So they're following him and watching him day in and day out, do exactly what he's preaching and talking about for food. And his nourishment and everything. He's putting all this trust in his father, and they're watching this human do this. And it, it was putting something on their heart. But that's why the whole thing of miracles, because you realize he wasn't human. That, he was also God. Both. Right. He was all human and all God. Correct. Yes. Okay, well, let's move to uh, a little, little bit deeper. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5 uh, 17 through 20. And see what that message was. Second Corinthians 5, what did I say, 15 through 20? No, 17 through 20. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20. Got it? Therefore, if anyone, now we are, we are past Jesus uh, dying on the cross. This is Paul speaking. Mm -hmm. We're past Jesus dying on the cross. And so he's, he is uh, giving us more information uh, about that good news. He's saying, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, meaning you have made that profession of faith, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, he rose again, and he is in heaven, and that the kingdom of God is in a person toward the uh, to have that relationship with God. If anyone is in Christ, he, uh, the new creation has come. Uh, some, some of your Bibles say you are a new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. He gave us a ministry of reconciliation uh, that God was re reconciling the world to himself. This is what we've been talking about. Reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So, we are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, be reconciled to God. Now, what old has passed away? What old has passed away? He says the old has passed away. He's talking about the law, right? The law? Yeah. Okay, yes. The law has passed away. The getting to have a relationship with God through obeying a bunch of rules has passed away. Yes. Well, it's, it's also, I mean, I don't know the Greek and anything for creation, but what's passed away is original sin. Once you're in Christ, that that old man, that old person, that old sinner has changed. You are a new creation. The new has come. What is new? What is new has come. The old is gone. The new is here. A new you. A new you. What What's new about you? What's different about you? You have faith in trusting the Lord, unlike before when you were sinning. He was doing whatever he wanted, but now that you're following God, or now that God has come through, you are doing as he wants. Yeah. And the focus changes from you to the kingdom of God. From you to the kingdom of God. And as Hope said a little while ago, that is a peace that comes that, as the Bible says, passes all understanding. You are no longer an enemy of God. You are a friend of God. That's the new you. That's the new you. Um, what does it mean to be reconciled to God? Your debt has been paid. Your debt has been paid. There is no way you can get to heaven by yourself. There's no way you can be good enough by yourself. And so your debt has been paid. You have been reconciled to God in that, uh, uh, as, as we started off. To, to be reconciled with God is where you are. You've been made right with God. You can only do this through, as you said, through faith. You can only do this. It's God that does it. It's God that does it. For by grace, whose grace? God's grace. Oh, for, by, uh, for by grace, uh, through faith, you have been saved. It's not anything you've done. It's not any works you've done. Uh, because if you, it says, the Bible said, if you depended on all the goodness you have done, then... It wouldn't be faith at all. It would be your man-made way. But he says, it's not. It's not of yourself. 
lest any man should boast, lest any man should boast. So, uh, it's only through Christ, his death and resurrection. What does it mean that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation? So it's like Jesus was imitating his father selflessly and people witnessed it. And all the people that walked around with Jesus, people ended up interacting with those people. And what spread from Jesus of their imitation of him is now being imitated by the ones who witnessed the followers. And it seems to keep trickling on down the line. <laughs> That we are imitators of Christ. So, so what is your ministry of reconciliation? You have been reconciled to be an imitator of Christ. So your ministry of reconciliation is to what? Is to share. Is to share. Is to share. Exactly right. Is to share. Who can be an ambassador? No one Christians. No, not anyone. Anybody believe in Jesus? Anybody that believes in Jesus. You have to be a follower of Jesus to be an ambassador. All right. So Romans 10. Flip over to Romans 10, 14. And it says, Romans 10, four, uh, Romans 10 14 through 17. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how they, can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the what? Feet. Feet of those who bring good news. All right, so let's look here. We can debate, there's really no debate between relation, uh, relational evangelism and proclaiming the gospel, but they should be used together. So what is our message? This is simple, and that's in box two. The message, number one, is the problem. What's the problem? Sin. Sin is the problem, okay? So if you were going to give a message, the message, you have to first give the problem. The problem is sin. Romans 3.23 says, For all have what? And fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that very clearly. Romans 3.23. Then you have to let... Two is uh, the penalty. Romans 6.23 says... For the wages of sin is, what is it? The wages of sin is death. That's Romans 6, 23. Uh, this is Romans 3, 23. This is, uh, and this is spiritual death. Romans 6, 23. So then... What is the provision? Three is the provision. You have to have the problem. You have to have the, no, the penalty, and then the provision. You can just go on with Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, gift of God is eternal life. Keep it going through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have to keep going through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's another one, uh, Romans 5, uh, Romans 5, uh, uh, Romans 5.28. No, Romans 5.8. <laughs> Romans 5.8, excuse me. And that says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were still sinners, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. Or we could keep on with Romans uh, 6.23 and where it says the wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life. And that was the provision. Both of those give the provision. And the last one is a decision. It has to, you have to come up with a decision. And this, sometimes people will be with you all the way through there, but then will say, well, I've got to think about it some more. I've got to think about it. And, and you know, that's, got, that's, uh, that's with them. But that's uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. We go back to that. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified. It's with the mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And so, oh, and so we have to make a decision. You can, you can share your story, what Jesus did for you, and, uh, and then or ask for their story. Tell me about your story. Let me tell you God's story. And God's story is one, two, three, four. It's as easy as that. Some of you have been in this class when I have shared God's story, and I know that Hope has seen it, just using the one verse, Romans 6, 23. And I've drawn it, drawn it on a napkin in a restaurant before. And all the people in the world, all the people are over on this side of the cliff. God is over here. There's no way to get over here. You can try to jump. You can do anything, but the, it's so wide a thing, you're just going to fall in. This is your payment, your wages for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life with him. That relationship that we were talking about. How do you get over there? There's only a bridge. The only bridge over is Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the problem. That's the penalty. That's the provision. And, and that's the only way. And that's as simple as one one verse in the Bible. One verse tells it all. Now there are lots and lots and lots of other verses, but one verse tells it all. Okay, why do we share the gospel? Why? Go down to the last one, and we're almost through. So let me just quickly tell you. We share it uh, we, uh, for God's glory. We share the gospel for God's glory. You can look at 1 Peter 2, 9. We share the gospel because people are lost. That's 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. We've just read, we share the gospel because we are Christ's ambassadors. We have beautiful feet, those that share the gospel. God works through people. And we share the gospel, the fourth reason is we share the gospel from Romans 15.13. That says, we delight in the Lord and have great joy when another is reconciled to him. It's a joy that God puts in us when others are reconciled to him. It is really a neat thing. All Christians are called to share their faith. You have received the message to share. <clears throat> What's keeping you from sharing the good news? Ah. Uh, you write down the, down the bottom, whatever your takeaway. I loved the way uh, you did it last week, uh, David, when you said, my takeaway from this lesson is. So write down. Uh, you don't have to tell me. Just write down your takeaway for this, from this lesson. And then your 